Welcome back, Mountaintop, and our E-Church family and friends around the world. So glad to be back with you again on another Wednesday evening. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to spend some time with us in the Word as we grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. As always, share the message, get the gospel out to as many as you can as we move into the Word of God. Pray with me tonight before we get started. Father, we bless you now. We thank you for your grace. You've allowed us to come into your presence. We pray tonight you would send your Word, heal, strengthen, and deliver. Make us to become stronger. Bless those that are bereaved. I pray, oh God, you send comfort to their hearts, those that are in between what you're doing. Pray that you strengthen them as they move forward into even greater, greater blessings, greater miracles, greater peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I want to say thank you for all of you that participated in Vision Impact. If you missed it or your funds were not accessible at that time, then please, as soon as you can, get your gifts in and let's all work together moving towards the vision which are set before us. It's on this card. Go on our website. Pick one up in the lobby. Or ask one of the, the um, uh, administrators, uh, one of your people that are working with you, one of the ushers, to get one, one, one of the ministries you're working in. I'm sorry. Get this card, set it aside. We're going to be doing this again real soon. So, But yet, I'm glad for all, I'm thankful for all, even you that are online that did your part, you that are in person. Thank you for supporting Vision Impact. Blessings, blessings, blessings be upon you. Okay, let's go into the word a little further tonight. Back to the book of Hosea, the second chapter. Last week, we were trying to lay down our thoughts of looking at the wonders of God's love in the wilderness, <clears throat> he was talking to us out of our theme, let go of yesterday and take on today. So we're moving on to something greater. Yesterday was good. It's been a blessing. But God has something greater in store for you and for me. So he lures her. The Lord does this. His, his bride, Gomar, brings her into the wilderness <clears throat> and he speaks tenderly to her. I tried to set up the wilderness for you and I to be an experience of uh, difficult trials of life. And sometimes we look and see how do we get to where we are, only to realize that <clears throat> God is in control and taking us to where we're going. Excuse me. So he's the shepherd. He leads and he guides. And here we are in this wilderness place. And I kept speaking to you about the wonders of his love in the wilderness. <clears throat> Not only did he speak tenderly to her, or he speak he the Lord persuasively to get her to a place where she would know she needed him. Now we see him in verse 15 of Hosea 2. He says, I will give her vineyards from there and the valley of Echar as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. You see the parallel of our theme letting go of yesterday to take on today. And he's using this <clears throat> scripture and this subject in Gomar, as Gomar and Hosea, how God is still leading to something greater, even in the middle of a wilderness. I pray that this lesson grabs your hearts tonight. The wonderful resolve here is that he gives her vineyards in a wilderness. What are you saying, Pastor House? God can make things grow where you don't think they're going to grow. God can bless you in your lack and you will have a abundance in your lap running over. He says to, to them, I'm gonna do this in the wilderness. You have to excuse me tonight because I'm excited about the lesson as much as you will be, I pray in the end. This vineyard speaks of fruits and fruitfulness in a place where it couldn't seem to be possible. God says, I'm going to take barrenness and desolate places and bless you right there. I'm going to take, watch this, some things of your experience that were worrying you, things that seemingly were your failures. I'm going to use them and bring about a refreshing strength. Oh, my God. I'm going to take what people thought you should be written off on and I'll bless you, not in Hawaii, and that's a good place to be blessed, not on an island, that's a good place to be blessed, and some of you are probably there right now listening to me, 
but I'm going to do this for you in the middle of a recession, in the middle of a dark, gloomy time. Yes, Pastor, it's like you're always building us to reach for more exactly because your God wants you to have more. And if you have a lot, get a whole lot more. I'm going to do this for them, Clinton, in a wilderness, in a two-bedroom apartment, in a five-bedroom house. I'm going to still bless them even in the midst of a wilderness. This is the assurance of the divine leading of the Lord, never contrary for his higher good. Wherever God leads, it's never contrary or contradicts his higher good. In other words, Romans 8.28 says it like this in, in the New Living Translation. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. For them, God has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me and wherever he's called in me to, People will see you walking through your wilderness and begin to talk about you and say, look, I told you that was going to happen to them. But they don't understand who is leading you. And if God led you in it, he's going to lead you through it and bring you out of it. Oh, my God, put that in your spirit. If he led me to it, he's going to lead me through it and bring me out of it. God's hand is never out of harmony with his heart. Where his hand is, his heart is there. He's not going to break you or crush you or destroy you. He's tenderly speaking to you tonight in your wilderness. And he says, I'm going to give you a vineyard right in the middle of your wilderness. I'm going to make you fruitful in a barren place. The, his wisdom never contradicts his love, never does that. So joyfully and confidently, we trust him, thanking God by the Holy Spirit that he has allured us to this place. I'm going to lure you to Las Vegas. I'm going to lure you to go and purchase something that's too big for you to handle. I'm going to lure you to this place. And in that place, you're going to be fruitful. God is awesome, church. He leads sometimes, and where he leads, even through the valley, it's an experience to see purpose that comes to destiny. And God starts doing a new thing. Watch what happens more in this text of Hosea 2.15. I will give her the valley of Echar as a door of hope. Now, if you studied Old Testament in Joshua 7 and 26, it was in, the, it was in Achan in this valley of Echar where they took the things that they should not have taken. Achan took them and there Achan died. And it became the valley of suffering. Because here is where they disobeyed God again, Joshua 7, 26. But the people now came and broke that thing off because they offered up Achan because he was disobedient and his family. And God removed the burden from them. And that place become a valley of troubling forever. So they never want to come back to that place where you take what belongs to God. I'm talking about giving a little bit. You better hear it. I never want to come back to the place where I take what belongs to God. I always want to give him rightfully everything that belongs to him. Here is where we get the subject matter or in the valley of Ikar, the valley of trouble. But here's the hope and the wonders of his love, even in the valley of Ikar. I'm going to give you a door of hope. I'm going to do something here, even in the midst of trouble. In the gateway of trouble, I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to bring a new door, a new door of hope. I hear the Holy Spirit teaching us tonight, saying to someone, God's getting ready to open for you a new door of hope. I'm going to show you my wonders in this wilderness. Fresh vineyards are coming. Hopefulness and large liberties are coming your way. We are about to experience God's hand, even in the midst of trouble sometimes. A deep sense of weakening takes place when you become helpless to not know what's going to happen. But God said, remember, I'm leading you. You will not dread or, or fear the troubles that seemingly are mounting, surmounting around you because God is leading. But never just think that when you're doing spiritually great, great and progressing and climbing that that's all God has for you. There are times you come to a valley of trouble for God to show you that his hand is still on you. And it's a place where he can have you lay down and rest, even in the middle of a valley. Let me talk to somebody tonight. Come closer. 
Pastor House, I, I thought when, it, when it's good, it's good. Sometimes God have you in a place to trust him when it's challenging and it's not so good. Isaiah says it like this in 65 and 10. The Lord, in NIV, the Lord says to, to them, the valley of Echar, a resting place for herbs or for stock, for my people who seek me. I'm going to make this valley of troublesome place a resting place, <laughs> a pit stop for God's glory. You're only at an intersection. You're not at a dead end street. God is doing something right now in your life. And he wants you to rest and trust him. Yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I'm walking through it. Can't fear evil because God is with me. It's not a reckless not fear. You don't stand in the middle of the I-15 and say no cars are going to hit me. No, you bring your faith to understand that's not where God wants me to be in the middle of the I-15 freeway and hoping that, that nobody hits me. No, but when he leads, he's already prepared a way. I see a, a, a river. I see a, a gorge. I see a way being made, a door of hope. Hallelujah. A door of expectation. God is going to swing something great into your life and show you and I wonders even in the wilderness. Isaiah 59 and 1, he says over there, tying this all together. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. Wherever you're at, God's hearing you. Even right now in your prayer time, in, in, in your morning devotion time, God hears you. And he wants you to know that he's coming to your rescue and your aid. aid. And even the midst, in the midst of all of the troubles that seems to be mounting around you again, surmounting around you again, he says, I'm going to tell them that I'm going to give them a vineyard and a door of hope in the valley of trouble, in the place of Echar, in the place of trouble. Peter understood the reaching hand of God in in Matthew 4, 14 and 30, he said, Peter was sinking and looked away from Jesus. He said, listen, keep your eyes on me while you're walking through here, Peter. You got out the boat, you stepped out, but keep your eyes on me. Matthew 14, Peter gets out the boat and when he saw the winds and the waves, he began to sink. And he said, Lord, he cried, Lord, save me. And the Bible says in Matthew 14, 30 and 31, he says, and the Lord saved him immediately. Jesus stretched his hand forth and caught him. I believe the Lord's hand is stretching tonight, catching somebody, catching you in your depression and, and you're thinking you're alone and nobody's with you and nobody cares about you, catching that single parent mom and catching you going through this horrendous divorce and catching you going through this time of financial strain, catching you at the top of your mountain says, I'm still with you. Come back to me. I lured you over here. You got all the money you can ever amount. You got everything you the heart's desire, but you don't have me. You need me back in your life. So here I am. I'm bringing you now in Hosea 2.15. I'm bringing back the joy of your youth. We are, a few Sundays ago, we were in service, and Pop Wesley came, and they, they tapped me on my shoulder and said, Pop Wesley is here. And he, I went back to where he was at 88 years young. Pop is dancing like a, like a young man, just shouting and jumping. I said, Lord, let me get to 88, and don't forget my dance. Don't forget my praise. Don't forget how I made it this far. I said, Pop, do you want to sit down? I said, I don't want to sit down right now. I want, to, I want to shout. I want to shout. I said, then shout, Pop. That's somebody that understands how great God has been. Could have came and, 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 and took us a long time ago, but he still got us here for a reason. So that's a man saying, I'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praises will be in my mouth. God says, I'm going to give you the joy, Hosea 2.15, the joy of your youth. Every now and then you should take a moment to go by a little elementary school or high school. Just sit out on the street, roll your window down, and listen to the joy of youth, the days of innocence, the children on the schoolyard playing. God's bringing the church back to the place where you're worried less, worry less like your children. They just come home and ask dad and mom, where is it? I need, I need, I need. V-Bucks, put some on my card. They act like the money grows on the tree. They act like you got it like that all the time. That's the joy of your youth, when you trust God again like you used to when you first believed him. As a mother knows what a child needs, our father knows what we need. I believe somebody tonight wants to get back to that place of joy, that place of happiness, even in the wilderness. Um, I think you said it like this, don't wait till the battle is over. 
shout right now. I think your joy is depicted on where you're at right now, not when you come out, but you're going to praise like Miriam did in Exodus 15 when they crossed the Red Sea before they took another step. They picked up the timbrum and begins to dance and praise God. So get your shout back, get your praise back, get your happy back, get your joy back. Because God is doing something right there. Hosea 2, 15, right there in your wilderness. He's bringing vineyards. He's giving doors of hope. And my God, he's bringing the joy of your youth. Isn't God awesome tonight, church? I hope you're enjoying this word. I hope you're enjoying this word. You can have your joy back. You can have your singing back. But you can't have your joy back without singing. You can't have your singing back without dancing. And you can't have your dancing back without celebration. I believe the Lord is saying to us as many prophetic things tonight that it's time for the church to start celebrating. What are we celebrating, Pastor House? We're celebrating what's coming. We all know what we've already had. Yesterday has been there. But we're celebrating what's coming. Singing there in the days of our youth. Experiencing God and his deliverance from what he did when we came out of our own personal Egypt, which is a type of the world. Every answered prayer is a time of celebration of new songs, of fresh manifestation of the wisdom and the power of God and how he has operated within, within our lives. Psalms 103 and verse 5, he says, he says, he fills my, my life with good things. So our youth is renewed like an eagle. As he gives us the, the joy of our youth, he begins to fill us with new things. And as those new things come in, we are renewed like an eagle. I'm not going to go through, but you know of the eagle process. Once it gets old and it takes the talents and begins to pull out the old feathers and body and, 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 and skin is hurting because he's pulling out the old. So that and he can take the pulling out of the old, the new will grow back in. God had to pull some things out of us <laughs> so the new things can grow back in. And now the joy of your youth is coming. The pain of yesterday, I told you that. Is giving me the strength for today. Youth is renewed. Psalms 103 verse 5. Youth is renewed like eagles and we soar high. Ask yourself tonight, am I taking the challenge or taking life to change my outlook? Am I taking, am I taking the steps to change my outlook? Ask yourself tonight, what steps am I taking to change my outlook? If God has promised me this according to his word, then what steps am I taking? I must pursue and overtake stress. I can't be stressed out these days. I must find a place to relax and overtake stress. Instead of making excuses, let me start making plans. I got a word tonight, Pastor House. Hosea 2 and 15. God is planting vineyards and making me fruitful in my barren wilderness. God has given me a door of hope even in the time of trouble. God is having my youth renewed even right now, then what steps am I taking? What steps am I planning? Instead of making excuses, I need to start planning. What would you focus on, Peter? The storm or the promise? I would focus on the promise. Storm's going to be there. Let me focus on the promise. We all have to play a part in this hour that we're living in, letting go of yesterday to take on today. What part are you playing? It's springtime. Many of you are cleaning out old stuff, and it seemed like you only moved it to the other side of the garage or to the other side of the storage bin. When are you going to move on and prepare for something new? God cannot feel what you do not prepare for, but he can feel what you prepare for. If you can do, if you can't do what you can do, God will do what you can't do. If you can do what you can do, then God will do what you can't do. Letting go. We are seeing God's wonder in the wilderness. God is bringing sweetness out of bitterness. God is making broken bones heal stronger and better. You're going from barrenness to abundance. Can I say that again? You're going from barrenness to abundance. Abundance. How did I get here, Pastor House? He lured you into the wilderness. He spoke tenderly to you and I. Then he gave you a word. 
I'm going to plant a vineyard here. Vines, vineyards, fruitfulness. I'm going to open a door of hope. Hallelujah. I feel that thing in my spirit tonight. Somebody's about to walk into a wealthy door of hope. Unexpected door. And I'm going to give you youth so you can enjoy it. Behold, God has done a new thing. Can you not see it? It's springing forth. Now, let go of yesterday and take on today. God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed these lessons. More to come, more to share. God is so awesome and so graceful and gracious. His compassion never fails. This is your season of increase and abundance in Jesus' name. Father, bless now. Strengthen our hearts tonight. Let this word and the meditation of our hearts be accepted in your sight. Let us go forward in you and gain ground. Heal us, strengthen us, and deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved. We'll see you real soon.